Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and another video. I bet you can guess what this week's video is about, but if you couldn't, this week's video will be the full build of this massive haul tree that I've got beside me here. And when I say massive, this thing is absolutely massive. It's 10 and a half feet wide by seven feet tall, and I can barely move the thing by myself. The cool thing about this is, it comes apart into three pieces, which makes it a lot easier to move. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. If you're interested in any of the tools or products that I use in this video, you can check out the description where I've got a link to those. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So the shell and the main frame of this thing will be made out of three quarter inch birch plywood. And the first thing I needed to do was to break all these large sheets of plywood down into usable pieces. Trying to rip full-size 4x8 sheets of plywood by yourself is always fun, but surprisingly these birch sheets weren't overly heavy, so I was able to get the job done. So I figured that showing every single cut on every single piece would be a little repetitive and boring, and nobody wants a boring video, so here is a montage of me ripping the pieces using the miter saw and then the cross-cut sled to get everything to the final dimensions. And we'll take a look at all the individual pieces here in just a second, which will hopefully make everything I'm doing here make a whole lot more sense. Okay, so a real quick look at all the plywood pieces we have cut out. There's six sides here, three back pieces, and then three top pieces over there. So the sides are 18 by 18, the backs are 18 by 40, and the tops are the same size. So these will all be put together with dado grooves, which we'll go ahead and cut out now, but here is a quick look at everything once it's cut out. So these are the pieces that'll make the bottom shelf of this thing. Like I mentioned, these pieces will be put together with dado grooves. And since the plywood is three quarter inches thick, if I grab a three eighths inch setup block, that'll mark the depth for exactly half of the thickness of those plywood pieces. I also measured a three quarter inch gap between the fence and the blade, which just so happens to be the exact thickness of each of those plywood pieces. So we'll see why I left it three quarter inches a little bit later in the video. But for right now, I needed to cut the dado grooves on all of these pieces in order to join them together. Now, if you're not familiar with the dado blade and how it works with plywood panels, the dado blade is adjustable to the exact thickness of each of these plywood pieces. So this groove I'm cutting out with the dado blade, that's where the other piece will sit down in, and it allows these pieces to be joined together without using any screws or nails or any hardware. So looking up close here, you can see how that back panel fits exactly down in that groove we cut. Now to put the other piece in, we need to continue that groove that was on the side pieces all the way along the back piece. So leaving the fence in the same spot, we cut that dado groove the length of the piece. So the bottom cabinet section will be made of three individual cabinets, but I needed to make six individual cubbies. So the only way to do that was to put a dividing piece on each of the bottom three cabinets which would give me six sections overall. So to do that, I just simply measured the exact center of these pieces, and then I cut another groove right down the middle so I could slide another piece in there to make the individual sections. When using this type of joinery, at least for me, it can be a little tricky to get a certain piece the exact length or width that you want. So rather than cut that piece wrong initially, I just leave it a little bit long, then once everything is together, mark where that piece needs to be cut, and then rip the excess off. Another trick I'm using here is because I couldn't get the tape measure to accurately measure the inside length of that groove, just take a scrap cutoff piece that will fit down in the groove, make a mark, and then use that to measure the distance. Who needs a tape measure anyway? Not this guy. Maybe that's why everything that I make is off by an inch or two. I mean, you've gotta have an excuse for a reason as to why things don't work out exactly how you wanted, right? Anyway, after I had that longer piece ripped to the correct width and those inside panels cut out to the right dimensions, it was time to glue everything up and turn these pieces into an actual cabinet. So with a little bit of glue and a little bit of hammer action, everything can be put into place. 
Making things with this method and dado groove type joinery where everything lines up exactly perfectly once you're putting it together is by far one of my favorite things to do and favorite techniques as far as building a piece. It can be a little tricky to cut everything where it needs to be and for everything to line up, but it's really satisfying for everything to finally come together and snap in place once you begin the assembly process. So I did what you just saw three times and in no time the bottom section was complete. The back section where that three quarter inch gap will be used to have pieces go vertical to connect this whole thing together but more on that later in the video. Moving on to the middle section of this thing we will once again be using three quarter inch birch. Now I had to cross cut this to length rather than rip it to length so I grabbed my track saw because there is no way I could accurately cross cut this to the same length on each side. Even measuring and using a square to make sure that the track was lined up, I still ripped off the inside edge where I used that track saw just to make sure that I had each piece completely square as I didn't want this to be off whatsoever. So I cut three panels to make the back piece and then I cut seven smaller strips which would serve as the dividers for each section of this cabinet. So I wanted the interior dividers to be really the focal point of this whole thing whenever you see it, so I decided to put a rounded feature on each of the dividers. To make the rounded cut, I'm just using a Jasper circle jig and a regular router with a spiral up cut bit. And the jig has several different holes to where you can pick out the diameter of the circle you want to cut, but basically you pick out the size of the circle, put a pin in for the jig to pivot on, and then using a plunge router, you just make the cut. This is actually an incredibly easy process using this jig, and this honestly couldn't have been any easier. Now that the curve was cut out, all we needed to do was to line the fence up on the table saw to align that, and then rip the excess piece off of each of these pieces. Now I originally wanted there to be three large back panels and cut dado grooves down each one of those for those dividers to sit in. But the more I thought about it, I figured there wouldn't be a way to combine those back panels, so instead I decided to put the dado grooves on the dividers, cut the big panels into six pieces, and then put the panels in between each one of these dividers. After the dado grooves were cut on each of those dividers, I then ripped the bigger panels in half, so instead of having three bigger panels, I'd have six smaller panels. Just like we did with the bottom section of the cabinets earlier, we'll be using the dado groove as far as how to join these. Now I'm going to back this up with a little bit extra support, so I grabbed my brad nailer and I put way too many brad nails down in each one of the grooves, just because I thought that some of these pieces might be a little awkward or difficult to get adequate clamp pressure on, the extra brad nails inside definitely wouldn't hurt anything. After those sides were tacked on with the brad nails, I just grabbed some clamps and put them on the panels to make sure that they would stay secure when they dried. So up to this point it had been pretty easy to put those individual panel pieces together, but when I started putting multiple pieces together it was a little bit more tricky because obviously that dado is pretty small and there was a little bit of bow and bend whenever I would put the clamps on. So I used a straight edge to make sure everything was aligned and then once again I used way too many brad nails to secure everything in place. 
So the more panels that ended up being put together all at once, the harder it was to get them aligned. And when I got to this point, I really wasn't sure how this was going to work. So I did what anybody would do. I stood around for a couple minutes, looked at it this way, then I looked back over there, still couldn't figure it out, so I decided the only thing that there was to do would just be go ahead and go for it. <laughs> Here's a better angle to where you can see the bow that I'm talking about. So of course, because this is not one solid piece and it's multiple pieces glued together, there was a risk that it would be bowed a little bit. So I just got it as straight as I could and then I put pipe clamps on the top and I'll put one here on the bottom in just a second to make sure that all these stayed in place where they needed to be. Again, to add some extra stability to that joint, I went crazy with the brad nailer once again. And despite what you think, this video is not sponsored by a brad nail company. Although at this point it probably should be. So if you own a brad nail company and you think that we should work together, now would be a good time for you to go ahead and try to get in touch with me. I'm sure we'll be able to work something out. Also, this way I wouldn't have to spend the entire budget of the build just on brad nails alone. So despite those back panels bowing a little bit when I put them together, up until this point everything had still gone pretty smoothly until I got to this point. And just because this section was so long with so many different joints, I found this part really really difficult to glue together. I couldn't get a lot of clamping pressure on the inside of those separation pieces because I didn't want to risk pulling them apart. And you can see there that whenever I tightened the clamps down, the whole thing ended up bowing inward a little bit. So to fix this problem and to add some extra security to the whole thing itself, I quickly cut out two panels that would go on top of this to keep everything in place. So because this was 10 and a half feet long and plywood only comes eight feet long, I cut out two equal sections, trimmed a rabbit with the router right in the middle of each one, and then they would overlap. So I just put some glue down on top, marked and put everything in place, and then I used screws to fasten the top to those divider pieces, which would make sure that everything stays put while the glue dries. Now this part of the build was not planned at all, and everything I'm doing here is actually in a rush to make sure that I get everything where it needs to be before the glue starts to dry. If I was doing this again, I might consider trying to do this with dado grooves just to keep the trend of the dado joinery going on this build, but the screws worked in a panic and it ended up working okay. While the glue on the middle section dried, I took some scrap pieces and I put on top of that bottom cabinet in the 3 quarter inch gap. Whenever the bench top sets on top of this, it'll actually rest on those outside edge pieces of each of the cabinets. So I needed to build this up so the base would be strong and the top would be supported rather than sag down in between those cabinets. Speaking of the top, while everything else was drying, it was time to get started on the top. So I'm using 3 quarter inch white oak here, and I used four boards glued together that would make up the total width of the cabinet. This oak had been pre-surfaced from the mill that I bought it from, and while both sides were pretty smooth and it appeared that it had been planed, I still ran the edges over the joiner to make sure that I would have a good glue up. One tip I have for getting a good glue up if you have these type of clamps is to always throw some small clamps on the edges to make sure that the boards don't have any separation at the end. And also if you can, leave the entire panel a little bit longer overall. That way if there is any separation towards the end, you can cut that off after everything is dry. Once everything was dry, I ran the entire panel through the planer. And at this point I am really glad that I went ahead and upgraded to the 20 inch planer instead of the 15 inch planer. Because after one pass that panel was perfectly smooth which saved me a lot of time sanding. Next up was to build the upper cabinet section which would set right on top of the middle section. 
And this upper section is made almost identical to how we made the bottom cabinets at the very beginning of the video. So rather than go through every single step and process like we did at the beginning, I figured I'd just show the highlights of me cutting those pieces up, as well as the dado grooves, and then assembling everything. On these top cabinets, I decided to make two sections rather than three, just to mix it up, and really for no specific reason. In no time I had a top cabinet section and all I needed to do was to throw some clamps in place and let that glue set up and dry. Once that second cabinet was made, this thing was finally starting to resemble something of a haul tree and looking like it was finally coming together. So the cabinet sections on both the top and the bottom needed to be glued together to become one piece. I would have made them all as one piece, but since plywood doesn't come that long, I had to make them in multiple pieces. So I put glue on the end pieces and glued them together, and then put a bunch of clamps on. I'm not exactly sure what this clamp is called, but it's from Craig, and it's like an extended clamp that allows you to reach a little bit further in and put more pressure on. I wanted to start with that in the middle so that those outside pieces wouldn't bow one way or the other. But I got them clamped up, and while that was drying, I got started on the face frames for the upper cabinets. The face frames for the upper cabinets, as well as the lower cabinets, which we'll get to later, are made from 3 quarter inch poplar. So I first cut two strips the full length, and then I used the cross cut sled to cut the vertical pieces, which would connect the top and the bottom of that face frame. So the face frame will be connected by dominoes, but first I wanted to make sure that the face frame was perfectly aligned and then it would match up with that bottom divider. So to do this, I grabbed my digital calipers, measured the offset on each side, and then adjusted it one way or the other until it was exactly in the center. Once it was finally lined up, then I just used a square to mark a line. And the bottom section is the only part that's important because that top piece doesn't have anything to align with, like the dividers on the bottom section. These are the domino tenons that I'll be using in the mortises I just cut out with the domino. So you just pop them in place. And these will line everything up on the face frame for when it is clamped together. Now if you don't have a domino and you'd like to do this process, you can do the same exact thing with a dowling jig or pocket hole screws work fairly well on this. I just like the domino because it's efficient and it's very precise, makes this process very easy overall. So once the cabinet was done drying, I attached that face frame to the cabinet using glue and, you guessed, brad nails of course, because I hadn't met my brad nail quota earlier in the video. And while that face frame was drying to the cabinet, I directed my attention to the ends of these plywood panels on the middle section. So they make this birch 3 quarter inch trim specifically for this reason to hide the ends of plywood. And all you have to do is cut it to length and then you use an iron without any water or without any steam just to heat it up and go over top. So there's glue on the underside of this veneer and when you run the iron over the top it heats that glue up and it bonds to the plywood ends pretty well instantly. 
This is the first time that I've ever done this and honestly it was a pretty easy process at least until you got to the curves and these curves just did not want to cooperate. I tried heating up the underside of the glue with the iron before I put it on but it was really hard to get the very end of that iron to go along with the curve in order to heat it up. I did end up getting it to work fine, it just took a little bit more effort than what I would have hoped for. If I was redoing this, I probably would have made the dividers just out of solid wood rather than plywood to avoid this step altogether. The veneer trimming is typically just a little bit oversized, so you can take this tool that trims the edges flush and gets it down to 3 quarter inches exactly. Just like we glued the top cabinets together, I needed to glue the bottom cabinets together as well. And the reason I'm doing this on top of the middle section is because my workbench was cluttered up with other things at the time. But once it was dry, I moved it over to the workbench so I could get started on the face frame for it as well. And you can see here that the face frame doesn't line up perfectly, and that's okay because we only need it to look like it lines up perfectly. So in order to do that, I took the oak top and I clamped it to the top. That way we could push the trim board right up against that and then it would look like it lines up perfectly regardless of whether or not there's a gap. Instead of cross cutting all the pieces to the same length, I put the piece on top of where it would go on each section, marked the line, and then I cut them individually. And they were all actually pretty close together as far as the same measurement. There was a couple that were off by maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, but I wanted everything to line up very well since it would be up against the floor, because any gap up against the floor, even if it was very small, would not look all that well. Very similarly to how we made the upper cabinets, I just took the square, marked the line, and then this entire frame will be assembled using the domino tenons once again. And just like we did on the top cabinet frame, this face frame will be attached with glue and of course brad nails. I think glue and brad nails is going to be my solution for every single thing that I have a problem with from now on. Need to put two pieces of wood together? Glue and brad nails. Need to hide a gap between two pieces? Glue and brad nails. Car won't start? Glue and brad nails. Now I might have went a little too far on that last one, but anyways, here is the face frame clamped onto the bottom cabinet. I used pretty well every clamp that I had in my shop, and whenever I'm clamping something up, I'll typically let the clamps stay on for about a day or so. I don't think you need to leave them on that long, but it's better to leave them on too long than not long enough and have it not glue up properly. Once the face frame was dry, I put the oak top on it just to see what it would look like. Then I needed to actually clean the top up. So I first flush cut each end to make sure that it was square and lined up. Then I sanded the top down to 120 to get it ready for the finish. And finally I used a chamfer bit just to barely give it a detailed edge and take the sharp edge off the top section of the top. Before I apply the finish, I like to wipe everything down with mineral spirits to make sure it's clean and get all the dust off. And then I'm using Rubio Monocoat Chocolate Oil to finish this piece. Now I just did a full in-depth video about using Rubio on this top for this piece. So if you haven't seen that video and you want more detail on what I'm doing here, check out the video in the suggestion at the top of the screen. Next I needed to get everything ready for paint. So I first started out with tacking some trim pieces on the sides to cover up that rabbit joint and then I also wanted to cover up the brad nail holes from earlier. So I'm using this DAP Tridex putty and this is probably the easiest to use product I've ever had experience with. And all you really have to do is take a little bit and smear it over the hole where the brad nail was and then let it dry. The container says let it dry for about five hours, but I was impatient and only let it dry for maybe an hour or so, but it worked fine. 
So if there's a lot of excess on there, you can scrape it off with a chisel, but the easiest way to go about this is just to grab a sander and sand all of that off. So at this point I was really happy and really liked how everything was coming together, especially those curves on the middle piece which I felt gave this thing a whole lot of character, but I wanted to add some trim on the insides of this in each section to give it just a little bit more detail. So I cross cut some more poplar boards to length and then just glued them in place on the very top and the very bottom and then I just used a scrap spacer block to measure equal distance on each one of those so they would all be in the same place. After all the trim pieces were on and all of the holes were covered up from the brad nails, it was time to get some paint on this thing. I used primer first followed by a coat of paint and about halfway through on this cabinet I decided that I needed to change in order to keep from getting any more paint on my shorts. Also why just get paint on one pair of clothes when you can get paint on two sets of clothes. When the paint was dry the next day, I needed to work on a way to attach the bench top to the frame. Usually I would use Z-clips or expansion brackets for this, but because of the way this was made, that's not possible on this build. So I first marked the center on each of the cubbies in the front. Then I used a router with an oversized spiral bit to cut a hole that was a little bit bigger than the mounting screws that I will use. Next I grabbed a countersink bit just to hide the screws a little bit further up in the cabinet and because that hole is oversized that screw will have a little bit of room to move in case that top bench expands or contracts. So the screw will pin the top down tight to the bench top but it's free to move forward or backward just a little bit in case there is expansion. Now opposite to this on the back of the bench top I don't want there to be any movement at all. So rather than using the router to plunge an oversized hole through that, I can just drill the hole and put a screw straight into that without having to worry about any movement whatsoever. And with the top situated, I just put a clamp on the front to hold it in place and then I put screws in each of those holes. So I used two screws in each cubby to hold this thing in place and with 12 screws I figured that it would be plenty secure. The only thing that I had left to do was to put the hooks on in the middle section of this thing and the recipient of this was kind enough to provide me with the hooks which had a keyhole style slot for screws to go. So I first marked the center, marked the offset of each hole, then just drilled holes and put screws in place for the hooks to be seated on. The only thing with the hooks is that the company unfortunately sent one of the wrong hooks. So rather than having all six matching, I only had five. So in these next few shots, just pretend that that last hook is over on the last side. And here are some final shots of how everything looked after it was stacked together. Okay, so here's everything assembled. Just real quick, a couple things I wanted to mention. This top cabinet will be connected to the bottom cabinet up underneath the face frame right here. On the inside, I'll put a couple screws on the front, maybe in two or four of these cabinets to keep that on top. It's pretty tight on the side, so it's not going to go anywhere, but a couple screws in the top will make sure that it stays. And then on the back side, I'll put some boards on here. Now, I'm not going to do this by myself. One, because I have to move this thing out of my shop, and two, because it's too heavy for me to move and line up by myself. But here's what that'll look like. So when this is all lined up, there'll be screws that go through these support pieces into the plywood. The same on the bottom, that'll keep everything in one piece, keep it from tipping or keep it from moving. And I left a gap here where the top piece wouldn't come all the way back. So when these are actually set up, this will slide all the way back and set right on top of that. But those boards will keep that together. So that'll wrap this one up. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found the content useful. If you did, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think of this thing and how it turned out. If you're new to this channel, definitely consider subscribing so you won't miss out on any upcoming videos. Again, thank you for watching. Of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more.